record. And the record. Access Channel 9 from the City Hall Council Chambers. It's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. And this is City Councilman Kaz Kwiatkowski, and uh, for a few minutes we'll be doing this alone. Uh, I think DJ's down on his way, and uh, so real quick, the rules. Uh, you can talk about any subject you want, uh, anything at all, anything that bothers you, anything you want to discuss. We just ask that you keep it in the bounds of good taste and try not to get uh, personal with anybody. And outside of that, it's uh, your show. So the number is up on the board at 870-1284. And we'll be waiting here for your phone calls on this, uh, what can be described as a wet and snowy day. Go ahead, caller. Yes. Uh, again, once again, your, your program doesn't start at 2 o'clock. <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's uh, it didn't work out today, but I'm I'm trying to find uh, today today it never yeah. works out. Well, you know what? I do this voluntarily, so I try to get down there the best I can. I do have things I have to do in my uh, other life. Well, so I, I mean, I try to bear with me. We may start. Uh, Sunday. We start at two o five. That's not bad. Cut out the drinking on Sunday. No, I don't drink at all anymore. Oh. oh. But uh, I do have I do have. Uh, Family matters and things I have to take care of. So, oh. so try to bear with me. I mean, two o five is not bad. No, it, it's not. It's not good at all. So. Well, you know, it's it's tough when you do this. When I was here at City Hall, it was a little different, but what? I have to drive in now, and I got other things I have to. So we try to get it on time as best we can. No, oh, well, cut out the drinking on Sunday, and you can get up earlier on Monday. Well, if you catch me drinking on Sunday, I'll buy you three. How's that? Uh, go uh, uh, if it, uh, lines are free once again, and uh, as always, he's uh, a little disappointed I don't start at two o'clock. It's a little tough sometimes, but uh, you know we try to do the best we can and uh, uh, on with some topics. Well, the weather is kind of as we look outside, gray and dreary, but uh, let's hope we don't get blasted again by any more snow. We've uh, we've had our fill already for November. And uh, just uh, driving around town, uh, it seems like everything is sh shut up for the evening and uh, the day. But uh, last week we had Eddie Kissel on here and uh, Jerry Scribzak. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. You drive around town. I try, but... Uh, hey, you got to admit those guys did a good job up in Southeast Erie this time. I tell you what, I, I said this and I, I attribute it to, uh, I'm not afraid to say this, when the new guy took over. That's I, right, Pete didn't have a plan. Well, if he had a plan, it didn't, uh, it wasn't good for us, you know. No, not for the east side, it was always look, donated to the west side. I mean, our, our garbage day was uh, that night when the storm hit, you know. Yeah, it was Thursday. Night. Right, so they did. They did get up there before the, you know, so the trucks wouldn't get stuck. Yeah, I heard a guy complaining and all his leaves didn't get picked up. My God, give <laughs> us a break. Well, you know what? I look at my my daughter came up from Minnesota, down. I mean, yeah, she 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 was probably thought she was in Florida. Well, she looked and she said, "What? Where's? How come all the trees are still up?" And I said, "It, it was. It's a weird year, you know it." Well, the leaves always seem to be there until after the first snow plow. And then the snow brings them down, and then they cause havoc. No, I mean, I still got leaves on my trees, John, in the backyard. Oh, I do, too. But I mean, mean, what are you going to do? No, I mean, it's just a weird, you know, they, it seemed like it was a late fall. And then, yeah. we got, and then we got hit by the snow, and it was like, yeah, they did a good job. You know, the last thing I worry about is, uh, you know, like I'd known the plows were going to come. I threw my garbage bags back a little bit in my driveway, so, you know. You know those guys out there plowing, those guys out there picking up the garbage and everything. They did a they did a substantially great job. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have been out there that night. I mean, you know, I tell you what, I'm, I I promised myself I'm going to take a ride with the, uh, and I'm going out with the police. I know that for sure. I've been, I've kind of been with the firemen. Oh, driver, just hold on. 
I'm going to go with uh, my good friend, uh, uh, one, <laughs> my good friend Danny. I told him I'd like to take a ride with him. Well, you know, when you're driving in that passenger side, you're going to see it a whole lot different than he does. Oh, yeah. Why? Well, I plowed when I was a younger man for the parking authority. Yeah. It gets old real quick, John. Every, I, I did many years of plowing, and it got real old. It gets old real quick, and, you know, people that think it's an easy job, I mean, you just, you know, after a while, I mean, you're, you're constantly on the... Uh, under pressure because you don't want to hit something and the time. then you're, you're you're one bump away from throwing the plow up you know that's true uh, it, it's, it's a rough job now let's get down to some city stuff uh oh first of all uh, I see that the zoning authority did not grant the sons there I was just going to talk about that I attended that meeting and boy I'll tell you it was like a a tale of two cities at, at one time I thought Eddie was taking, you know, was carrying the day, and then... Oh, Eddie goes right down the middle. It, it was, uh, the vote was unanimous, though, right? He wants what's right for the bucket fishermen, and he wants what's right. And the zoning board, they just turned over to how the convention center wanted this. I, I thought he was carrying the day for a while in his arguments, but uh, then, you know, I had to leave early from that meeting. Ever since the zoning board... Uh, reappointed uh, a new person. Yeah. That person passed away. Then they appointed another one. Nobody really does their homework down there. Well, I was disappointed because I thought... Uh, and at this plot zoning, and the law is there. It's just like Mill Creek out there with no nepotism. Mm -hmm. They hire a, a young lady to take over parks. You know, as I, as I read the rule, the ordinance... It, it got creepy, because when you read it, there's always seems to be... Vague. It's vague. Yeah. I mean, to me, on the surface, if you read it, you know, quick, and, and you'd say, okay, uh, you can't have stones. And, and it is specific about that, you know. Yes. But then they always put that little thing about, uh, you know, approval or, you know, so there's always a little gray area in there. It's, all, it's always a vague situation. And that was going to be open, and it's going to be open for the public, the bucket fishermen, and now we got a hotel being up there. They shut down the walkway. Well, the thing is, if they wanted, if they were concerned about the uh, uh, the, the proximity of the of the uh, sidewalk to the edge, you know where the water is, then you could have put like a little fence, you know. That's true. You know, in certain spots, but nowhere else. I mean, even as you walk along the waterfront. Uh, you know, if you're handicapped, there's no way in the world you're going to get across those stones. No, no way in the world. Yeah, I do hope they, they take some of our money, the, the fishermen or whatever, and appeal this ruling, take it to court, let the courts decide. Well, I think they're thinking about it, John, but there again, now look, there, there's the cost. They don't waste the money. They'd rather, they'd rather put the money into the fish and everything else. And they do a good job. But as far as the convention center, they got stuff. You know, it's a, it's a nice pathway and all that, but you know what? It, it in, On the part that's closest to the waterway, uh, you know, you, you, you can see that the stones are, first of all, they prevent anybody that's... Handicapped or... Right. Or, well, even even a normal person's got to be very careful. And get down Not, to I, the I, like to, I, should, I shouldn't use the term normal. I'm talking about a person with no problems would still have problems walking over those stones on a wet day. You know, imagine imagine someone in a walker or a wheelchair. Yeah, trying, little kids, whatever, with their parents. Or trying to fish down there. Or think if you're not paying attention and you, and you catch your you catch your shoe on there. That's true. Now I know what they're going to tell me. You know, you got a hotel there, right? Yeah. Something tells me we're going to have women in high heels walking along that, you know. Well, yeah, you, uh, you look at that and it's, did you see the paper today? Uh, about the road being closed? No, about Destination Erie and the Outlook and all that. Oh, what did they say now? Oh, they're going on 10 years of Bosworth report, whatever, and it's, you know, it's all whistle and bells, but the Bosworth report came out for a different city. It didn't come out for the city of Erie. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to read that in the whole shot. And then I see that, that the mayor has an appointment coming up to the Planning Commission again. Did you know that? No, I didn't. We the same men on the planning commission. You know, they've devoted their time for quite a bit. 
that he will notify us when he makes his appointment. Well, he's going to do the same three men again. Now, what kind of a planning commission is that? I can see having one there, but let's get some new faces into this thing. Well, I, I, I think it, it's always good to have... Uh, it was like when I was on school board. I, I promised myself I wouldn't run forever and ever that, you know, it was a young person's game and somebody that has kids in the district, you know, with a vested interest, they should be running, you know. I can't understand why the mayor gets to appoint all three of them. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm just getting around to understanding the appointments, uh, but, you know, they're all set by ordinance or by, you know, whatever, you know, state laws and all that, so I'm going to have to go through there. But what future do you have? that you have the same men on the planning commission constantly. Well, you, you get the same viewpoint. The same viewpoint, and the mayor says, you do it this way, and that's how they're going to do it. Yeah, you want people... Uh, I, I've always felt that when you, when you... You know, the city constantly evolves. All cities do. They, they go through changes. They're, they never remain the same. The city you and I remember is gone, okay? It's never going to come back. Well, if it does come back, it'll be in a different... Uh, it'll be in know, tourism. Yeah, and if it ever does come back to shopping, uh, you know, will it be like it was before? Who knows, you know. But Just like we need high-speed rail going north and south. Well, I, I, me, it can only go south. I agree with you. I mean, uh, I was at the airport the other day, and I love the airport. I, I'm a proponent of it. But we need bigger planes and more flights, you know. And, and, you know, it would be nice if you had a train, a high-speed train that ran... You're never going to get a high-speed train in this area up here. Well, that could happen, but it probably won't. I, I agree with you, John. It's North and South. It's like when they planned the high-speed rail, they eliminated, what was it, between Buffalo and Cleveland? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they put us in kind of a... Limbo. Yeah. So, talking about limbo, who's that guy with you? He looks like he can do the limbo. He, you should see the hat he came in with. He looked like... There's no, there's no hat. He you hit it. No, there's no hat. He had the big white hat like uh, no. Yeah, you, I see that. I see they're putting up his cameras all over the city now. So he's going to get <laughs> involved with Comcast. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. What cameras? You mean the security cameras? Yeah, all over. The, they're getting him up. Well, we're not going to get Comcast anyway. You know that, John. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's regardless. We're going to get charter, they said. Mm. You're going to pay through the nose. I still, you know, people are still coming up to me. I get to get DJ sometime to uh, uh, explain it again. But uh, a lot of people can't get the show in there. Like, they'll stop me and I'll tell them, you know, you can go on computer if you have a computer. But uh, it's amazing how many people still... You know, there's going to be a lot of TV going on their computers. They've got that, if they have that thing going now, you get all all these various movies. Yeah. Don't play for them, I pay for them. I think it's kind of like for 90 days or so. I'm watching not only football, but my shows on CBS or other channels, and, and I constantly get pixelation or the, the volume just shuts down for three seconds. Oh, that other baloney with the commercials they jack it they don't if your tv should have a control for that oh yeah i love it when you, you know you're sitting there you got it real low and all of a sudden you know the commercial comes on and you're like wow what happened there you know well, the fcc was supposed to have all that under control but uh, yeah, they, they do they, they they allow the uh, stations to they take allow the advertising the bomb but uh We'll get up. Somebody wants to talk. By, by the way, that garbage is out again, so our uh, code enforcement sure does a good job. This is about eight weeks now, and it's Sunday, and the garbage is out there already. I, I doubt if anybody, you know, I, I can complain, but I doubt if anything's going to be. Oh, that's right. That the, the head of your code enforcement, he backs into his salary every week. <laughs> Have a great day. We'll see yeah, you guys, I believe, are on 97 point, I want to say three. Yeah. We're 75.5, you're 97.3. That makes it so easy to remember. A lot of people, though, <laughs> just, you know, technologically, I'm not saying, that, you know, it's it, it's quite a deal when you're used to all your life to, yeah. you know. You can buy sudden, a new TV, but learning how to run it and figure out how to punch in a dot when you never used to have now, to do that. It's if, you, okay. if, you, if you have the cable box or the adapter box. If you have a cable box from Time Warner, it's still on Channel 9. Or that little adapter. Or that box. little adapter. I consider that a cable so box. So that's preset. That's preset. Go ahead, caller. 
Good afternoon, Kaz. How you doing? Uh, I want to um, tell you, I went down and paid on my water bill, and then they explained how it's separated now. Right. But Kaz, how can they shut people's water off if their water's paid, but they're maybe behind in their garbage or their sewer? Well, the way we were told, uh, if you pay your water, that's separate. No, but okay, but if you don't, the sewer and the garbage are attached together. Yeah, that's the new, what they voted on. Right, so if you don't pay your sewer bill, or you don't pay your garbage bill. But they can cut, shut your water off? Yes, the way the, way the rule goes is, uh, from now on, if you, when you pay your sewer and garbage, mm -hmm. which are tied in, the money will be applied to the oldest uh, if you have anything that's like old and past due, huh? it'll be applied to that first. I it, see. And it's in the order, like uh, the way they explained was the order will be old garbage will be first, and uh, old sewer, then new garbage, new sewer. Well, see, what happened was I had um, a toilet run. Yeah. Ran up over three hundred dollar bill. I did too, and I, I, you know, they came on, they uh, found it for me. But I have to compliment uh, Mr. Loader down there, Ron Loader. He met with me, he reviewed it, and he cut it down to a, to two seventy one, which helped a little. Mm -hmm. So I, when I went down to pay on it, she said to me, "Well, this is you're paying it all on your water," and I said, "Well, what are you talking about?" And she said, "Well, now it's sewer." and garbage and the water separate so I paid the whole water bill but now it goes on my garbage bill that's the way she explained it to me well you got a water bill right I, I it was water and sewer at that time oh okay and you owe 271 right yeah right and what she did was she separated them I paid all on the water she said put it all on the water and then what uh, I, uh, I said, well, I'm going to owe on my garbage. She said, well, your sewer and garbage will be together. Yes, they are now. So that remaining amount will, you know, for your sewer will be on your next sewer and garbage bill. And she said, if, if people don't pay it mm -hmm. and catch it up, if they can shut your water off. And they, they can, but they're, they're going to go, uh, they're, they're, they're going to have a... Uh, they haven't sat down with us exactly on, they're going to, it's going to take a while to, to catch up with everybody. Yeah. So they're going to go after probably the... But it's never been more than one payment behind in my garbage bill. Yeah, I wouldn't think that, you know, I... You know, I, thou, you know thousands mm -hmm. of dollars. But, Cass, my problem is a lot of them are landlords, and, and the water and sewer is connected. Mm -hmm. I have a friend whose daughter rents, and the sewer and water is connected to her rent. But if the people that she's renting off of get behind, they can come in and shut her water off? Is she the landlord or the tenant? No, she's the tenant. Okay, here's what they told us. Uh, because we had that, you know, there was many problems yeah. that we looked at. First of all, if you do owe money in the past, you're free to go down there and make a payment plan. Yeah, but this is somebody who's... No, no, I mean, I'll explain it in the order like you asked me. Go ahead. Yeah, so if you owe money in the past, you can set up a payment plan, you know, so that, you know, you if, catch up. Yeah, if you go down there, they'll come up with something that, uh, uh, you know, will, uh, will be that, uh, so that you won't get your water shut off, as long as you approach them and talk to you. And if you're one payment behind, uh, by the time they post your, your property and everything, it, you know, you'll be caught up. Yeah. It's going to be for the people that, uh, in the past, who, who just, you know, just let them go and let them go. And uh, so, you know, that there is a safety mechanism if you need to make a payment plan. Yeah. Uh, second of all, with, with the tenants. Yeah, that's going to be a... Cause yeah. Because that's not fair to the tenants. No, it? but the, here's the thing. The landlords are responsible. Right. Even though they may tell their tenants that, the, the landlords, the bill is in their name. The property is in their name. I understand that. And, and, but if, if, if the person in good faith... If, right. If, if they're paying... If they're paying, the, uh, well, explain to me, does she pay the landlord or does she pay the bill directly? Pays the landlord for the water and sewer. Okay, this is what we were concerned with. It's connected to her rent. Right. Now, if the landlord is not paying. That's 
my point. Okay, then what she can do under the state of Pennsylvania, and this was explained to the council, mm -hmm. she can go under what they call rent withholding. She can pay the money directly to the, uh, to the water authority, which is our collection agent, and there is a process. Uh, I'm sure the water, uh, oh, Mr. Wojtek or one of them could explain it, uh, that the tenants do have rights. And if you pay your money and your landlord, yeah. and you can prove it, if you got like a check, yeah. and or the landlord, get, if he's not paying his, if he's not paying his taxes, then you can go under rent withholding, mm -hmm. and you can uh, that money will be applied directly to to your bill. That's who she rents off of. And they can't kick you out in that time. See, who she rents off has other properties, but I understand he's one of the people that it's behind. Yeah, it, well, you can tell me off the air if you want, because uh -huh. we have a good idea who they are. Mm -hmm. One of them is uh, not a good name in Polish. <laughs> I'll say that. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, that, but uh, if you want to call me off the air, I'll be glad to hook you up with, like... I just, you know, there's so many questions yeah, involved tenants, in all of this. But tenants do have rights, and if they if they are paying and the landlord's not doing it, it is the responsibility of the landlord because the property is still in his name. So they can go on to rent withholding under Commonwealth laws. Yeah, and, because I've somewhat, uh, my friend told me, the electric bill and is also included in that, you know, her, her, she pays rent, sewer, water, utilities, all in her wow. rent payment. See, when I used to rent, uh, electric and gas were in my name. Oh, I see. But, no, wa is, but, but water and taxes were in the landlord because that's the way it was. The water authority always billed the landlord. But I have to compliment Mr. Loader. When I went down there, I was so upset. Yeah. I had purchased and my sons put a toilet in for me so I had proof that I you know I had to replace the toilet and he was very nice he came down he explained everything he said I'll do a, a recheck and we'll send you a new bill and it came within two or three days and he said and we will give you time to make you know mm -hmm. your payment so my compliments to him well he's nice and so is Mr. Uh, Wojtek I don't know him I dealt with yeah, him he's, the, loader, but he's the big boss but yeah. I had a guy by the name of Mr. Shahovsky came out to my house oh. and I could not find a leak. I mean, it was so minute. Uh, I, I didn't, I was, you know, my problem was I didn't uh, realize it till uh, it seemed to be running and running and running yeah. and that's what happened, but not to keep, you know. Yeah, my, you, bill was, my bill was 200 and some bucks doing the same thing yours was. Yeah, mine was over $300 originally. They'll give you dye packs over there if you t ask them. Yeah. And you throw the dye into your toilet. Oh. And if it if it comes out, then you know that you got a leak. Yeah. And the water is running. And well, then I have a brand new new uh, commode, so hopefully I won't have this problem. Can you get to your water meter? Fine, but I I just had so many questions, and I I I haven't been paying attention yeah. like I should on. on well, you this. know you know what? Give me a call off the air if you like. Okay. And and I'll go through it with you. And if there's any questions that. Uh, you need answered. I'll, I'll, you know, we can. I can find out for you. Okay. Well, I but but there is some rules that protect the, the tenants if they're so if they're doing it. I I mean I own my home, but I'm just you know I thought to myself you know a lot of tenants that would be in the same mm -hmm. situation where their utilities and water and sewer are paid to their landlord, and if they're behind, you know, and they come in and shut people's water up, that's not right. Yeah. The trouble is these landlords. Uh, They've been pocketing what I'll, what I'll say our money, yeah. the taxpayers' money for a long time. And oh. if you remember Barry Grossman when he was the uh, I, county exec, oh. he, he went after the hotels that were I know, that collecting the, the tax, but not, not you know. They weren't turning the money in. No, I mean these landlords are collecting. What are they doing with the money? That's true. You know they got that stealing, and I'll, I'll say this, and oh. they they can take me to court if they want. Yeah. But to me, that you know what they're doing is they're. It's, it's not it, fair because a lot of these uh, tenants, you know, they, they turn their money in in good faith. Yep. But if this, under this new regulation, if these people are still way behind in their garbage, they could come in and turn the tenants' water well, off, they're and that's not fair. Well, they're going to get a warning first. Mm -hmm. It's going to be posted on the door and everything, and... Uh, Mm -hmm. Then, you know, plus, you know, their, their names have been in the... Uh, oh, I know. The, the, the lady down at the water department told me that you can look online. I oh, said, yeah. well, uh, I can understand that. But it's, it's, it's just a shame because... A lot of the important people in the community took care of their bills. I can imagine.
imagine they did. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Yeah, and you just, have a good day. Okay? And you know what? From time to time, we'll, we'll try to keep people updated. But yeah, I'd appreciate it. But I know a lot of people would because this, is a, this just happened at the last council meeting. So, you know, like the lady at the water department said, it's going to take time. Oh, yeah. We, we worked on this for a whole year. We were getting beat up in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. People writing in going, we're not doing anything. And mm -hmm. we wanted to be real careful because this is a big step. But, Ted, and, how in the world did people get $1,000 behind in garbage? My goodness. Well, I'll say this. What happened was... It, I if I owed more than two months. <laughs> well, it goes back to when Mario was, you know, he oh, told... you remember? He said... Yeah. You know what he said. Right. And a lot, I guess a lot of people took him at his word. And you know what? The, the, you could... Our garbage included in our taxes. Right. See, today now, if you went down there and you said, I want to pay on my sewer bill mm -hmm. and your garbage was delinquent mm -hmm. by law now they have to put the money towards the delinquent garbage bill I see. so that's the hook we built into there because it it, it got out of hand and, and you know what I'll blame uh, previous councils and administrations yeah, for not going after but this council mm -hmm. and this administration finally uh, it's, it's, you know we, we had enough it's a shame that it came to this but people took advantage of it and the, the that kept up on everything, you know, they're the ones taking right. it in the chin, and that's but, not right. But if you're if you've got a hardship, you know, call them, yeah. and you know they'll set up a payment plan. I, I have no complaints with the waterworks. They've always worked with me, mm -hmm. and I mean, sometimes I have to break it up, you know, in monthly payments, and they're always extremely helpful, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Bye, dear. I'll pass it along to Mr. Loader and Mr. Wojtek. Please do. Okay. Thank you. It's funny that uh, toilet thing uh, came up again, like every once in a while I'm here, it comes yeah. up, and my good friend Joe out in Ohio, who's actually watching right now, hi Joe, on the internet, it happened, it doubled his water bill. Oh, it's his amazing. water, it doubled from the fact that the toilet was running, it was running so bad, it completely, he's one person, he lives alone, and his bill went through the roof. I found two leaks, I corrected him. Yeah. But I still was getting, if you look at your meter, there's yeah. like a little red arrow. Yeah. If that thing is spinning, yeah. you got to, some. There's motion, there's water going through the lines, and yeah. it's going somewhere. I'm trying to figure, I'm, I'm, TJ, I'm everywhere. I'm looking at, I'm shutting off this <laughs> shut off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going, where the heck is it? And I look at the toilet, and it doesn't look like it's there. Yeah. yeah. I don't hear it running. You yeah. put this dye in there, though. Oh, it, it'll trickle through, and you'll yeah. see it go. But then my, what made it bad was my wife puts this, uh, like a lot of people do, they put that blue stuff in there. Yeah. So you don't know. <laughs> you can't. T yeah, that's the thing. So finally, you know, with the help of one of their one of their guys that came yeah. out, and he, he checked the meter and make sure that was okay. Sure enough, was that toy, you know? And then I've been watching it now. It's, you know, it'll go up to two hundred bucks and yeah. not even blink an eye. It did. It actually did. It was terrible. I would say you could find the leak yourself by using food coloring, but I wouldn't recommend that. Well, you, you, you could actually dye your toilet. Well, you could. Yeah, don't give me that. <laughs> They'll give you a dye pack down at the water It's a special dye that won't stick. If anybody needs a dye pack, I got about five extra. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Kaz, how you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? I know you. Who's with you? DJ. He showed up with his. Uh, I'm here. No. He, he's got the dogs out there. I'm Talk looking. About that. Yeah, the I can see dog. the dogs out there. The sled dogs. He got the sleigh out there, ready I, to go. I, I got, got the sleigh. <laughs> he looks like Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Yeah. How you been, Kaz? Good. How you been, though? All right, but I got a complaint. Well, go ahead. That's what you're here for. Well, I was at Denny's yesterday, you know, or the car wash, or not the car wash, the laundromat. You know, every once in a while, I have to go there and dry my clothes. You mean the one down there on Lower Parade? On Parade, right. Yeah. Listen to this, man. I counted 50 people in there. The only one that spoke English was me and the person at work there. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. The only people to speak English in that place was me and the person that worked there. What the hell is going on in Erie, Pennsylvania? Well, uh, from what I heard, and I would, uh, we are a community that they have determined, the government has, that we are, uh, how do you say, uh, we have room to expand and we, ha we are uh, easy to assimilate into. Yeah. I, I heard one, one figure one day that uh, 
there are the, the uh, government agreed to take uh, X amount of people from uh, certain countries, and Erie was targeted for at least 5,000 of those. You so, mean a month? No, no, it's supposed to be for, uh, you know, the, the term of the contract. But uh, what's, what's happening, I mean, you can see it. The, in Erie, you have a transition. A lot of people are moving out to the suburbs, and uh, the immigrants are moving in. And, uh, you know, to some of them, I found, are uh, we had a couple here at City Hall that are very hard workers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they are assimilating to the United States. They're getting jobs and, uh, you know, trying to better themselves. And but what how I, are they getting jobs when they don't speak English? Well, they, they usually take the job, uh, and a lot of them are taking jobs in the plastic plants. Yeah. Or in the, uh, like, we had some in... Uh, we have a maintenance service that comes in here, and some of the hotels are doing the same. What they'll do, they'll get, uh, uh, some of them speak very little English, or they'll get somebody to help them. Harry, that's what they're doing. But they're, but they're really doing the jobs that, uh, you know, how, how should I put it, we don't want to do, you know. Have you been to Walmart lately out on uh, Elm Street there? Y yes, I go there quite a bit. Okay, then I don't have to tell you the influx of people uh, work and they don't speak English. Yeah, I would I would think that the ones that are at the counter probably have to be able to speak it some English, you know. Well, this is what's going on. I know for a fact I found mm -hmm. out. Walmart's getting a tax forgiveness for hiring them, first that, of all. That's probably true. And the people that they're hiring that don't speak English and get ready for this, they don't have to pay any federal income tax for seven years. Are you sure about that? I'm positive about it. I, I was going to check into that because I found it hard to believe that. I, I was told that's a myth, but then again, you know, I don't know. Well, believe me, I know because I have family that works there, and they're not very happy because these people are making more money than real Americans who's paying taxes. These people are making more money, and I, I don't know. I just... I, I mean, it's just, it's disgusting. I mean, you know, hey, I feel bad for anybody who had to come from some place where they've been raped or mm -hmm. abused or this or that. But you know, Kaz, we're not doing that great in Erie, Pennsylvania ourselves. I have to work my ass off and I can't pay my bills. Yeah, that's, the problem is that, uh, that is, you know, that unfortunately in the city, and I, I think the next census is going to be a surprising number. I, I'm predicting that we will either hold the ground or actually gain population. I'm going on the limb because I think, you know, if, you, if you're watching like I am, you're seeing a lot of families being brought in here. Well, we know why it's going on, Kaz. Let's be real. Let's be real. This is all for future votes down the road. It's not that our government cares about these people. Well, here was interesting. I was out at Mount Rushmore about two, two, two and a half years ago. And you've heard about the, uh, the Indian population up there, right? Okay. You know, they live in reservations. They're poor. They've been on TV, you know, that they have all kinds of problems, right? So who do you think the government hires to work at uh, Mount Rushmore? The Indians. No. They're, they're bringing in these young kids from uh, different countries under some kind of uh, a work program. You ever hear of Wall Drug Store? Who? Wall Drug Store? No. It's, it's a big thing in South Dakota. People come from miles and miles to see the place. It's, it's just like uh, when you read about uh, that place in South Carolina, it used to call it South of the Border and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know where that's it, at. It's kind of like right. that. You know, it's a big tourist attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it, signs for like three, four hundred miles each way, it says. Yeah, and I, and I was looking, and who do you think they, they were hiring these kids from Europe and Asia? They're college kids, young kids, and they basically put them under very subservient conditions. They live in like dormitories. they got to work long hours. Mm -hmm. And one of them uh, spoke half Polish, half English, and I was talking with her, and as soon as they seen me conversing with her in Polish a little bit, all of a sudden some guy comes out of the back room and he's not too happy. So I'm thinking, you know, what's going on there? You may be right that there's some kind, of, and I read about it, there's some kind of program where they get 
the government gives them money to bring these kids in. They're supposed to be learning a skill and seeing America, but they don't see much when they're stuck in uh, Mount Rushmore, South Dakota, you know. Yeah, well, see, I always thought that before you came here that it was a requirement. You spoke English. No, I don't think so, not anymore. Hmm. Well, of course not, obviously. What are we going to do this week when uh, our president um, gives work permits for 5 million people to stay here when there's no jobs as there is? I mean, I'm telling you, they're trying to change the demographics of this country, and the reason they're doing it is not because they give a crap about people. Mm -hmm. It's because they want them people to vote a certain way. I was down here washing my clothes yesterday, and here's this guy, this Indian guy, bringing in Pat Harkin's uh, literature for re-election. I don't even think he had anybody. He, he didn't even have a challenger, did he? Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't believe he did. No, he didn't have anybody that ran against him. But this guy was passed around literature for Pat Harkins, and I was like, hey, buddy, the election's over. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, we need, uh, we, we do need some jobs in America. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's crazy when you drive around town and you see, you know, uh, uh, signs that say, you know, we need workers. Hey, there's nothing wrong when you're a young kid, somebody my age, you know, working in, a, in, in retail or stuff like that. But when you're a young family man, you know, you got a family, uh, you, you need a little more than, uh, than Arby's or, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Target or something like that, you know? Right. But you know, Kaz, I mean, you're a city councilman. You have to know this better than anybody. Take a ride on the east side on any of these streets, and the population is mainly refugees and immigrants now. Yes, people's fleeing out of the city. Why wouldn't they? Well, as they've left, uh, they, they look at, uh, that's what I'm saying, they look at the void that we have in Erie. Because we were at one time... Uh, how old are you, roughly? I'm 53 years old. Okay, I when I was a when I was about 12 years old, uh, you know, I, I'm a little, a little bit older than you, but you know, the town was up around uh, 138,000 people. Right, and it has to stay above 100,000 for some type of funding, doesn't it? it? Well, that's what they tell you that it's you know you want to be above that. So I mean, you lost 30 some thousand people, and there's no secret where they went. They went over the border to Mill Creek and Harbor Creek. Right, but when you're bringing people here that mm -hmm. can't speak English, and I don't give a crap what anybody says, seven out of ten of them are not working, and they're taking and taking and taking, how is that better in the city of Erie? It's not going to. I mean, I would be interested in one of the things the Census Bureau does, and I've argued with uh, you know the administration on this, even in my neighborhood, when you start putting college kids into houses that were once occupied by families, yep. your median income goes down. And, you know, businesses, when, when you get a business and they look at the neighborhood and they start thinking, who's, who's going to come to my grocery store? Who's going to come to my restaurant? You know, right. they, they look at what's in the area because people generally stay in their area. You know, they, they shop in their area. They, I mean, with rare exceptions, you know, if there's a grocery store there, they're probably going to go there, you know. So if you want business to come in here, and you wonder why, look the other day, you start looking at, uh, uh, you can come up with any reason you want. You lost Sanders, you lost uh, Bellows Market, you know, you're gradually starting to lose little businesses, and, and you wonder what's going on, you know. Well, just like that place closed over there on A Street that just shut down, what was that, Shore Mall, what was it? Oh, Shore Mall, uh, Be Bellows, Bellows or Bradley Surefine? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Why would anybody want to go into that neighborhood and buy groceries? I mean, that's a terrible, that's a terrible neighborhood right there. And, and that's what's happened. I mean, you you have a whole transition. I mean, here's the problem: you got good people in these neighborhoods that are being squeezed by bad people. You know, it's not the same neighborhoods we remember. When when you got uh, you know trouble going on, you got people in there that are that are honest and hardworking. They're locked up in their houses. You know. Right. And, and I, my, right, my, my hope, I'll tell you what I hope. I hope that these, I was talking to my wife the other day about how when I was a kid and the immigrants came here, the Italians, the Polish. That was different then. But, you know, I, I want to see these, you know, there's a whole uh, concept out there. Like, you see it once in a while where they open up stores and maybe some restaurants. I would love to see that, you know. 
Yeah, well, I mean, hey, um, if you go up Parade Street, the places where, there, you know, the Iraqis mm -hmm. and there was a couple other guys who ran, uh, they had places, you know, fixed cars, auto repair stores, right? Yeah. Up Parade Street from like 18th on, there's about three or four of them. It goes up to 27th Street, okay? Mm -hmm. You go there today and look at all the used cars that they're selling. So they are bringing business, but, but, are they getting tax breaks for starting these businesses? Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to, I, I plead ignorance, I haven't done this, but I'm going to have to sit down and try to go through piece by piece with different agencies and get the true story, because I keep hearing the same things you do, and uh, then, then I read articles that say it's not true, and I'm going... You know what, Cash, you're not going to get the truth, because... This isn't about people truly caring for people. This is about elections down the road. That's mm -hmm. all this is about. You know, whenever the black community are complaining, you know something's wrong, okay? Right. And they're starting to complain. And I just hope that somewhere down the road there's not problems. Because, you know, when Grandma can't get help paying a gas bill in the wintertime, and she fought for this country and paid taxes for 50 years, but we're giving all these people free stuff, you know, that's not self-sustaining. Something, something's got to stop. It really does. I mean, I, I just, you know, when I look around the city of Erie, Pennsylvania, I've only been here seven years. When I walked in to... Denny's laundromat yesterday, and I was the only one except the lady that worked there that spoke English. I could not believe it. And I asked her, I said, you know, every time I come in here, it just seems like it gets worse. She said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just come later on in the day. You know, and it's not because these people all live on the east side. We are bringing these people in here at record numbers. And to say, well, because people's moving out, well, all they're doing is costing us money at this point. That's all it is, is costing money right now. So I don't understand, you know, and then they just keep making babies. You know, another thing, let me, I, want, I just want to touch on this real quick, and then I'm going to get off this. I, I want other people to call. But anyhow, you know, we, we have this, uh, you know, we have people who, uh, Islam, you know, there's good, good, mm -hmm. there's good people in there and there's bad people, okay? We have this Islamic center up here on Parade Street, and I've been watching that place. And a couple years ago, it was just, you know, if you go up there on a Thursday night, I think it's Thursday, Saturday, it's three days a week, Kaz. Right. But if you go up there when them guys are meeting and you see the traffic going in and out of that place, you know, I'm just curious of what's being told in there. Well, it's a, it's, you know, it's like a, it's the fastest grown religion in probably in Erie, mm. and uh, you know until they prove otherwise, it's a place of worship. And, and, and can you or I go in there? Could you go in there? Could I go in there? Would you we know, be told to leave? You know, I, I don't know their rules, or they may tell you to take your shoes off, or I mean, I've gone to. Uh, I would take my shoes off, but. I'm going to tell you what. Don't I've gone to Jewish temples. I've gone to you know Protestant churches. I've been to. Uh, I've never been. I've never been there. Maybe I should uh, take a ride up there. Well, I, mean, I wish I could understand what they were saying because I'd like to. I'd like to see what's going on in there. Because I'll tell you, um, you know, we have. And, and you know what? Uh, to be a cop today, yeah. my God. There's actually a church that uh, I'm trying to think which one it is. It's set up so that all these uh, various religions have a place to worship. Uh -huh. And uh, when I was in the service, it was funny. We were uh, there. There actually is now in the army. Uh, there is a uh, what they call an Islamic branch of the clergy. Uh -huh. it, it was amazing when you get together with uh, 100, 200 guys. You know all the various religions. So you know I won't condemn any of them because you know they have to prove to me they did something wrong but uh, it let's hope that the immigrants that come here you know help rebuild the city and turn out to be good you know well uh, I said it before and I'll say it again I would rather live beside some of them than black or white people at this point because they don't bother you and they try to be friendly well we have some hard-working people down here that are from Nepal and 
Uh, there's a lot of them coming in, but when you read their plight, they were in, they were basically in, uh, they were shunned by their country. Yeah. And the one that took them in, they really didn't want them either. So, you know, they were sitting there in limbo. And as far as everybody else was concerned, they could. What's the, what's the city give them, Cass? 20 years tax forgiveness? We don't give them anything. Uh, come, on, know. Cass, come on, Cass. Come on, Cass. No, I, I, won't, I wouldn't lie. I mean, I I'm not aware of anything that we give as a council or as a city. You know, we don't give them anything. I'm just messing with you, bro. Let me give yeah. you a shout out to your ID. Okay. What's up, my man? Hey, what's up, man? How you been? Hanging in there. That's all you can do, man. That's the plan. Got the slate ready to go, right? He's ready. What yep. are they calling for? Two feet here in the next couple of days? Yep, two, three feet. Wow. That'll be good. <laughs> I guess the message and all that is to get the city to put the plows down to the ground, maybe. Oh, they're ready. They, you know they're fired up and they're ready. Great. Yep. We'll see, brother. I'll be calling about 13th Street <laughs> next week. Okay. okay, nice talking to you. I think I think they pass up 13th Street because I call. Probably. So stop calling. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, brother, hey, Kaz, DJ, you guys be cool, man. Yeah, you okay. too, man. Later. Later. Yeah, the only thing I'm going to say on the subject is that yeah. times are changing, and we have to roll with the changes, well, or we, else we're going to get run over by the changes. Yeah, we are, we are a community that has changed. And, uh, yeah, you have to accept the change, and you have to move along with it, because if you don't, you're going to get left behind, and you're just going to be miserable. So well, you might as well accept these things that are coming in. I think the problem, you know, we, we had, when I was a kid, we had, uh, you know, various migration patterns from different parts of Europe. Yeah. Uh, now we're getting people from cultures that... We're not yeah. maybe comfortable with, or we're not just not used to. But we'll get used to it. But I did. I was talking to my, I was talking to my wife, and I said, you know, it would be nice. Like when I was a kid, every once in a while you look around. For a while, there was a Dominican restaurant. Yeah. There was a Bosnian restaurant. Yeah. It'd be nice if they like these bakeries started. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I I had a phone call. I went to visit this guy at his house. He had a complaint. Turned out to be a Bosnian gentleman. Mm -hmm. And. Every time I go there, I have to have coffee with him, you know, because <laughs> he, he he makes it. Yeah, he's a marvelous guy, and you know what? Their coffee is different than anything I'm used to. Really, but I like it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what? If now if somebody opened up a coffee shop like that, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm all for everybody coming in. If people are hardworking and they're willing to learn, what well, is it? There's a gentleman here. Come he's on. a little little guy, and he. Yeah, works hard. He's uh, yeah. got his go. got his citizenship actually. Yeah. Like you said, these we're all happy. Want to do work that we don't want to do, and yeah, yeah I, there's a lot of things I don't want to do. So. Yeah, do you, I mean, with all with all respect <laughs> to Mr. Scott, do you really want to, you know, clean about 80 rooms a day or 40 or whatever? I've actually done that, and I didn't last very long. Yeah, so know. I'm telling you right now, I'm happy with people coming in that want to do the crappy jobs yeah. that I don't want to do. So and, and a lot of these people that with the cars that you know they have. Ex there's uh, the gentleman who opened up the gas stations. Yeah, yeah. The one that opened up in 18th Street. He, uh, I understand he's an Indian gentleman. Okay. He's got a couple of businesses, so. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know, you know, I'll find out, you know, what kind of breaks they get. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's as lucrative as people think. I don't know, though, you know. Well, check into it. But, see what you uh, can find out. There's a lot of people around town that, uh, you know, they, they had experience with cars and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what yeah. they go into, you know. Yeah. And, uh. You, you you find out there's uh, people have woodworking skills and all that and yeah my so, my former mechanic um, Al's it's um, he's an Arabic gentleman and he's up on 25th and Parade I went there for my first I don't know 10 years in Erie and he's been here for a long time well, so I don't I, think I, I don't I, think he's getting any kind of a tax break because he's been here for a while he's once on the uh, as you're heading south on the right hand side uh, yeah, yeah 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 I think he might be expanding too I. I it's too far for me to go now, so I have other mechanics, but he's the best guy, you know? I mean, so, you know, people calling up and being judgmental, not that he was. I just think people need to roll the changes and accept stuff. Yeah, I, <laughs> it was funny. When I was a kid, I remember somebody made a comment about a, a certain doctor and yeah. his ethnicity. Yeah. And he, <laughs> my uncle was sitting in the hospital one day, and he says, I don't want that guy. I want the best doctor ear he has. Yeah. And who do you think walks in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it's, you know, it's, it's, it is it is tough because you're watching, to a lot of people, the city is changing. It's, there's no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, we fear change. I mean, change is very scary, but again, deal. I have a feeling, though, DJ, if they do the right count, yeah. I think we're going to be surprised 
you know, our population, if we do the right kind. That's, I don't believe in the census because nobody wants to do the census. You know, it seems like they go to door to door and people yeah. don't want to answer the questions. You know, I, I just know that it's not 100% accurate. Well, even if they, I mean, when you, when you look, I remember I looked back and just, uh, my wife does research now, she's into yeah. genealogy. So I'm thinking way back when we were 130,000 people. Yeah. And the city was growing. We had uh, immigrant population coming here from Italy and Poland. And yeah. the Germans and the Irish were already here. And, you know, the Russians were coming. And, you know, we, the town was growing. You know, the, the Russians are coming. Well, the factories were, were booming. You know, there was a lot of yeah. work up here. And a lot of the migration with the minority population came from Mississippi in those areas because of the, the jobs up here. There you go. The Russians are coming. And and what was strange was I looked up my my family, right? Yeah. And sure enough they missed a couple. So even back then, they didn't have accurate counts. Yeah. You know. And like, you know, you knew kid somebody was around but they weren't counted. Yeah. So I mean, right now, you know, if they really do a, a truly great count. I hope so. I really hope it's accurate because I like numbers and I like reports. I like to see well, things I, that are, I like to see the numbers that represent what's actually going on. The school district really has the exact, they, they know how many kids are here. Yeah. Uh, illegal, legal, right. you know, immigrant status, they know that. Yeah. And if those numbers were ever factored in, I think you'd be surprised that uh, our 100,000 might be a little higher than we thought. Well, that's good. Let's get an accurate count. Ell Ellentown grew by uh, a population of migration into, into the city. So is it true that if we get over, you know, 100K that well, we get some sort of benefit? Well, they always tell you 100,000 is like the golden number. Okay. That, de that makes you a big city or a small city. Do we all get, like, free blenders or some sort of prize? Uh, and, and I'm not into it. You know, I, I, I don't <laughs> see the reports that they write. Yeah. You know, when they go for grants and everything. But yeah. my understanding is that, yeah, 100000 is like kind of like the, the holy grail of cities. If I, you don't want to drop too much below that. Yeah. I know when I first came here in, like, 98, it was there. We were at that oh, yeah. number. But it's been... Well, it's... And, and, and see, the, the other side of the story is, and I tell people this, yes, they moved out to the suburbs, yeah. but the county hasn't grown either. Right. So what you have is you have shifting, but you don't have any migration in, you know. When do we get big enough to be able to include the county and just say, oh, these are all residents of the well, city? Well, we, we have what they call a metropolitan area. Yeah. Okay? okay. Just to give you an example, Erie's like, let's say, 101, 102,000. Okay. Allentown is now uh, past us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think what they're up to. There might be up to 108, 110 maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, but what they call the SMSA, which is the Standard Metropolitan Statistical Area, that, that is determined by, in, in our case, it's all Vary County, no more. Yeah. Some places they actually include multiple counties or they actually go over a state line. Yeah. You could, you could wow. make a case that... <laughs> Jamestown and Conneaut or Meadville should be included in our number. Sure. But the, the federal government doesn't do that. Some places they do. So for Erie's sake, our golden number is 200 and roughly 80,000. That's, that's for the county? That's, or that's everybody, county, that's everybody. city. Okay. If you look at Erie County, it's about 280. Now that number hasn't grown in about 20, hasn't grown statistically relevant, I'll use that term. Because it, everybody's going from the city proper to outside. Right. But they're, not, you, they're just going back and forth, but they're not actually... Well, you're seeing people move from the city out there. And then the birth and death rate and all that, when you factor them in. Yeah. Not much is changing in the county. You're not seeing like 280 to 290 to 3. Now, they're predicting that yeah. the county will go up in, in the next 20 years. Okay. There, you know, but yeah. right now, for the last 20 years, we've been stagnant, which means yeah. people move from the city out to there. Yeah. And then whatever's moved back in the city has not increased the county. It's weird. I mean, something's happened that... So there's like a, a number of sets of numbers. I mean, you've got whatever's within the city proper, and we're shooting for over 100,000. And then you've got Erie County, and that's over 200,000. 280, yeah. Which number really matters? See, when you look at Ellentown, what makes them great? Yeah. You know, when they talk about, you know, the three cities encompass the Ellentown metropolitan area. Yeah. Three cities do okay. it, all in a row. Yeah, eight hundred thousand people in that area. So what do we do to change how we are perceived by the federal government? So well, even if we were, well, even county, if we were, you've yeah. driven from Erie to Meadville. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. nothing in that area. Yeah, right. Right. 
I mean, we don't have a big population base. You got Cleveland, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, right. and in between you have like Franklin, you have Meadville, right. Warren. There's not a lot of heavy. It's not population. a lot of people, but like you said, within the whole Erie County, there right. are over 200,000 people, or yep. they're supposed 280. to be. Go ahead, caller. What did I miss? <laughs> Uh, nothing. We had a gentleman talking about the immigrants, and uh, we had a woman talking about the water bills. You didn't miss anything, I don't think. You missed the end of the show. We have about one minute left. That's what I, that's why I rushed real quick. <laughs> I'm making chicken soup. I caught a chicken running across my street, and I grabbed him. That happens. That, I've heard that happen. Well, you, if you need <laughs> venison, i got five deer in my backyard. Uh, I had one in my backyard here a while back, too. I had five, though, John. Can you believe that? Yeah, well, you, you know where I live. I had one in the backyard. He got into the garden. He didn't know how to get out. Yeah, they're <laughs> running They're running all along. Uh, it's not unusual. I tell people, be very careful. You might see one on Pine Avenue. Or yeah. I see him running over there by that, uh, oh, what's that? Restroom down by us here on the corner. Oh, COS Club? Valerios. Oh, Valerios. I saw him running right up the street. Well, we had a black bear at uh, Connell one day. Yeah. He, he came across the water when it was frozen. The, uh huh. The bay. Wow. Remember that one that was out at the peninsula? Well, yeah. we had them right up in Wintergreen Gorge. <laughs> the bears. And some lions. I got a polar bear here today. Yeah, who's that? I won't. <laughs> we'll let that go. There we go. See him? But that's going to be very interesting with the water. You know that. With the water bills? Yes. Yes, uh, you know what? There, there's a lot of uh, a lot of fear, but there's safeguards built in. And I told people, you know, you can make a payment plan. Uh, I'm not talking about the payment plan or anything. Those people that got in that situation, you should shut their water off. Well, yeah, I feel sorry for the tenants now. But we were told that if the tenants, landlords, you know, some of these big ones aren't paying their bills, then the money that they pay will go right to the water authority. And they'll go under what they call rent withholding. That, that's true there, but I, I'm talking about the, the person having a rough time paying for the water and sewer. Yeah. Now, if they, not, if they don't stay current with their garbage and everything, they're going to shut their water off. What if these people are in need? They have to have their water. You're taking away a basic need. Well, I don't know. You know, there will probably be a case-by-case -case basis, but... That's what I was going to say, because you can't just... But, but John, what, what do the utilities do if you don't pay your bill? I mean, you work for who, the electric company? I did, yes. They shut you off, right? Well, it, there's a period where they can shut you off. Yeah, and it's... Well, with the water, it's the same... Well, water is a little different... Uh, well, different is it? You can't have water. Right, but I mean... Uh, they said with water, uh, it depends on a couple factors... There is a couple of rulings on that too, but eventually, if you don't pay your bill, they're going to shut you off. I mean, the gas company will, and so will the electric. Well, there are periods of time where they can't, but people make arrangements. But I'm yeah. saying that people that get behind in their garbage, while well, they should have their water shut off, because you have some of them going back 10 and 12 years. Mm -hmm. The first thing we take is money for garbage. And then, you know, that, that's that uh, with the sewer bill. That was. That was to stop this thing about people would come in and say, I want to pay the sewer bill, but I'm not paying my garbage bill. That's true. You know, that's, not, that's not valid anymore. You know, I, have, uh, I haven't seen anything where there's been liens put on these properties. There are liens put on there. We were, uh, we were given a rough list the other day when I was there. there it's a lot, well, put it on the computer. I, I, they didn't do it? I'll, t I'll check into it. How many are going to be enforced? And you know, the, your, whoever's doing your computer, it's on for a little bit, the, the mm -hmm. agenda and all that. Yeah. It's clear for a little bit, then it goes fuzzy. What's going on? Any idea, DJ? That could be a Time Warner issue because everything comes out of here pretty clean. It doesn't come out with any of the other... Uh, uh, other things I put on the computer. I'll check with Mike when I get in the back there today and see. It, it stays clear for a little bit, then it goes fuzzy. Well, I'm having, I'm having issues with Time Warner and my TV. I mean, I'll be watching like uh, CSI or uh, Blue Bloods or something, and all of a sudden, three seconds of silence. Well, and it, you know, that's because of probably foul language. Are you watching on the Internet right now, or you mean on TV? No, I'm watching... Uh, 
on uh, TV. I'm not watching on the internet. Yeah, that sounds like a Time Warner. Sounds like your cable's coming and going for some reason. Well, no, it's all right here. But no, I'm saying when I go on the city's internet or on their mm -hmm. their website for their meeting and agenda and all that, it's clear for a bit, then it goes fuzzy. Oh, you know what? I'm going to talk to Mike about that because I've seen something, like some of the cameras are flipping out. And I will, I'll talk to Mike about that, but I actually it, did if you notice that. It, it goes clear for a bit, but then it just blurs up again. You can make it out, but... DJ will take care of it, John. I will talk to the boss. Okay, well, just get your camera going up and down 12th Street, and we're, we want to yeah. look for that cash cow. Yeah. When are you, you going to fill the third seater? People are demanding, John. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll have to stop in here shortly. You should. We'll get you a disguise, you know. I'll have Ritz come in. He'll be a good disguise. I'll hide behind him. Have a great day, guys. You too, you John. Too, sir. And with that, we bid you all farewell. And uh, we'll, uh, as, you know, as this water bill thing, you know, captain. You know, it's going we're, we're it's gonna, gonna gonna to iron, iron itself out. You guys... You got yelled at for not doing anything for the longest time. Yeah. Now that you're doing something, people are going to yell. It's going to level out, and it's going to work, and they will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis where necessary. At least that's what I assume. If I, I believe so, too. I think I think it's all going to There are safeguards built in there for the renters. And we yeah, know yeah. It's going to be a process in motion, yeah. but... Yeah, it'll be good. So, heading out to your dog team, or...? I'm going out with the sleds. It's double parked. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see you. Tune in again next week. You're going to come back next week? If I'm needed. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, see, that's a, that's a number, 280,000. <sighs> but what you got is for some reason... Birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access, Channel 9.